A little while ago, I had a sister in Christ send me a book, and she said that she had bought it because she loves the book of Revelation, and she bought it uh, just to see, you know, kind of an illustrated what Revelation might actually look like if it was drawn out. And she saw a bunch of problems with it, and she said it's kind of really, you know, strange. Didn't feel right about keeping it, so she sent it to me, and uh, which I always appreciate, you know, people sending things like this to me because it is interesting. And I got the thing, and I just kind of glanced through it, and I thought, oh, this is just some kind of comic book or something or other. Um, basically, it's this thing here, the Book of Revelation. And what I did realize, actually, as I began to research this thing, it is actually a new translation. Um, I'm going to show you here in just a minute. I'm going to show you the overhead shot of this thing, but this is actually a new version of the Book of Revelation. It was translated by two Greek Orthodox uh, fathers, you know. And uh, so this isn't just some kind of a bunch of people, you know, remaking the NIV into a comic book format or something. This is a totally new translation. So let me show you a little bit more detail here. You aren't going to believe what is in this thing. It is crazy. Here we go. This is it right here, the book of Revelation. Um, you know, I'm just going to warn you in advance, there's some really, really disturbing images in this book. I think the guy, whoever illustrated it here, you can see the name. This guy had some uh, occult ties here, or some possession of devils or something to illustrate some of the things that he put into here. But you can see here, translation by FR, there's an abbreviation for Father Mark Ari, I guess I'm saying that, and Father uh, Philemon or Philemon, however you want to say that. Savastiades, or whatever, it's a, you know, a Greek name there, um, you know, from Greece in other words. So you have that, and interestingly, you do a little bit of research into this, into these two men, this, the Mark guy here is actually director of the Office of Inter-Orthodox Ecumenical and Interfaith Relations of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. And the other guy, the father, Philemon guy there, he is um, a presbyter of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. He's also written a bunch of books on uh, different religions and things like that. So, right away, front cover, you have a problem here. Greek Orthodox priests, one of which is an ecumenical guy, fighting for the ecumenical movement. And, I, you know, I could show every page of this thing and find issues with it. But I'm just going to do a quick video review here. I mean, the, the images in this thing are very, very, very dark, very disturbing. And as soon as I saw it, I saw these real twisted kind of uh, real dark, you know, lines in the face and everything's dark and real scary looking. As soon as I saw the, the illustration, I knew that there was going to be occult symbols in here. And of course, I wasn't disappointed. Right here, page seven, seven spirits that are before his throne. Right there you have a triketra, the uh, symbol of the witch's trinity. Right there. This is not a symbol of the Godhead. The Bible says that you're not to make any graven image of the Godhead. This is not acceptable if you're a Bible-believing Christian. So right there, uh, page seven, already you have a problem there. Okay. Now we'll go to page 9. Uh, another boo-boo boo -boo here. It was a Sunday, the Lord's Day. That is not what the King James Bible says. Okay, The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. It does not say Sunday there. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Okay, In the time of Jacob's trouble, they go back to the Sabbath day. So this is a problem, again, all right? I mean, it's just a, another sign that this thing was not created correctly. Okay, now we'll go to page 14. You know, and this is, there's your uh, seven golden lampstands, you know, seven golden candlesticks in the King James Bible. These are supposed to be angels. <laughs> yeah, okay. A little bit twisted there. But, um... Page 14, here he tells uh, 
I think the church of Ephesus, that they need to repent. And look at this. Therefore, remember how far you have fallen. Return, repent, and perform your first works again. So see them repenting here, and look what's above them. Oh, isn't that nice? This PX that you see on um, Catholic priests on their outfits and things, the symbol for Christ there. All right. Again, another big problem. I'm going to zip ahead here to page 32. And I mean, it's just all this real dark, real satanic looking imagery. You know, really, really twisted, very, very weird. There he goes, and he's called up to heaven, you know, and he sees uh, the throne there, which is kind of interesting because I thought the Bible says that it's green, you know, like an emerald. There's an emerald rainbow above the throne, yet it's orange and red here. Kind of weird. But uh, here he is. Sea of glass and ocean of crystal expanded before the throne. There are the backs of the thrones of the 24 elders. More trichatras. See? More trichatras. More occult symbols. And this thing is supposed to be Christian. Now look over here at the seraphim, which are the four beasts. And notice the location. It says in the Bible, King James Bible, that they're covered with eyes. It does not say that they have one single eye, you know, two eyes, and then one eye in the middle of their forehead. This is straight out of the occult. In the occult, they teach about the third eye, which is there in the forehead, the Ajna Chakra. Okay, this is straight out of the occult. And of course, you have to be politically correct here too. So you can't say the third being had the face of a man, like the King James Bible. You say a a person and you make it look like a woman you know some kind of a, a sexless woman or something like that you know just ridiculous okay and then here they are all chanting uh Holy, 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 you know, Lord God, Pantocrator, okay, which is Greek for Almighty. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the Pantocrator thing right. I don't really care a whole lot. <laughs> but why take out the word Almighty and put in a Greek word? See, it's just kind of weird. You know, I don't, I don't know what in the world's going on here. But you know. Here's these four beings, and you can see they're like sexless or something. I mean, it's, it's really quite bizarre. And also, I'd like to point out the fact that the seraphim in Revelation there, the four beasts that are before the throne, they have six wings, not two. All right? You know, very, very odd here. And now, over here, this is an angel. Isn't that a beautiful angel? <clears throat> and down here you have the scroll that, uh, instead of a book, it's a scroll, you know, that's sealed with seven seals. Look at that one. Kind of looks like the all-seeing eye, you know, another occult symbol. I mean, you could make arguments for a lot of these ones here. There you got a hexagram which is not actually uh, the Star of David. That's a hexagram. It's not a good symbol at all. But, uh, you know, all these weird things. And then it talks about the Lamb, you know, stands in the midst of the throne as it had been slain, you know. And, and look, look at the way this demented nut draws the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the legs of this being, and there's his head, there's his face. Why does he have an eyeball in his hand? And you say, well, well, maybe that's the uh, the hole, you know, there. Maybe that's the hole where he was nailed to the cross. You know, nice depiction here. Uh, no, actually, because you see, 
There's the hole. He's got an eyeball in his hand. And again, this thing here is out of the occult as well. You know, the, I forget the exact um, thing here, but you'll see in the occult a hand with an eyeball in the middle. Okay, this is not something that a, a born-again Christian would draw depicting Jesus Christ. I mean, this is just blasphemy. And it's interesting you say, but, but you know, it says lamb. Yeah, well, John 1.29 says, The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. You know, John says, Behold, the Lamb of God. Do you think Jesus came as this hideous freak here? Half man, half sheep or whatever? Uh, no. That's not what Jesus Christ is going to look like. You know, the Bible speaking figuratively that Jesus is the Lamb of God. All right, but this demonic nut that that you know illustrated this thing apparently doesn't know that. It's just horrible looking. But we'll go on. I mean, you know, I'm sorry if you're looking at this thing and you know if you have kids in the area, you probably want to get them away from seeing this thing. But uh, here we have. These angels, you know, and talking about how that they're to hurt not the earth till they have sealed the servants of their God of our God in their foreheads. But look, again, angels in the Bible don't have wings, okay? But notice the angels all have marks upon their foreheads. I don't even know what these marks are, but where in the Bible does it say that the angels have marks upon their foreheads? See, you know, here, oh, it's the good guys. They all have marks upon their foreheads. And then you have the 12 tribes supposedly here. You know, that, that guy really looks Jewish down there, you know. Yeah, looks like he's uh, white European. Doesn't look Jewish. But whatever. And again, you have this absolutely blasphemous depiction of God. You know, worshiped God right there. They're saying that they worship God. This is supposed to be God. This little skinny armed, little weird, disgusting, horrible creature. Yeah, I mean, it looks like some kind of an alien or something. It's it's really quite horrible. Then over here, you have the star falling from heaven. It's wormwood in your King James Bible. And the name of the star was Absinthe, or Absinthe, or I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that, but Absinthe, you know. And I looked it up. Absinthe is actually an alcoholic drink. Uh, why would they exchange wormwood for this? Hmm. Pretty interesting. You can actually go to Wikipedia and look it up there about absinthe. It's, uh, it's historically described as a distilled, highly alcoholic, 90 to 148 proof beverage. So, again, you know, what's the deal trying to cover this up? Trying to say it's alcohol instead of wormwood. You know, are people going to die of alcohol? No. Very, very odd. I don't even really understand why they're doing this stuff. But interestingly, you say, well, this is totally a new version. No, actually, then I looked at an eagle was flying at the summit of heaven. Woe, woe, woe to all the inhabitants of the earth. This is the same boo-boo that the NIV makes. They have, instead of an angel in your King James Bible, um, like Revelation chapter 8, verse 13 is where it says it, instead of an angel flying in and and saying woe to the inhabitants of the earth, you have an eagle. So you have a talking eagle. You know, and they say that the King James Bible is ridiculous. I mean, come on. Yeah. Next we're going to go to, we'll zip ahead here. Go through some more vexation and everything. 
Oh yeah, I love this one. This cracks me up. In the Bible, the Antichrist is wounded in the head, you know. But according to this ridiculous nonsense, he gets wounded in the side. That's a little far away from his head. The Bible says his right eye is darkened. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Um, should be up here, shouldn't it? <laughs> you know. And you say, well, you know, it's just they're a little bit off or something. Yeah, but see, the problem is with this whole satanic nonsense in here, when the Antichrist actually does show up and he's wounded in the head, people that read this thing will think, well, that's not the Antichrist because we know that the Antichrist, according to our translation of the book of Revelation, the Antichrist is wounded in his side. He's not the one, you know, this guy we're worshiping is wounded in the head. The right eye is darkened. This guy got wounded in the side. You see, pretty bad. Now this one here is really bad too. I mean, look at check this out. This is this is insane. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, slave and free, to be punctured, punctured on the right hand or forehead with a mark, the charagma. I guess is how you say that. Yeah. Okay. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say that. It's a mark in the right hand or forehead. You know? I mean, see, again, people are going to see this and they're going to go, oh, that's horrible. And then when the actual Antichrist shows up and he says, hey, put a QR code on your head or something, a tattoo or a stamp on your forehead, people are going to go, oh, well, that can't be the mark of the beast because we read in our new version that it's actually being punctured. You actually have, they, they take a knife or something here and they slice into your forehead and they, and the guy's grimacing in pain. I mean, who illustrates like this? You're talking about a very, very sick mind, extremely sick, that they'd take a knife and just carve it into the guy's forehead. I mean, this is weird. There's no scripture for this. Now we'll go to 134. Now, if you remember, uh, I said at the beginning of this thing, that this guy down here, the first father, Mark Airy, is an Orthodox Greek priest and he's working with the ecumenical thing and all that. So now if they're working with the ecumenical movement, what church would they want to cover up for? The Roman Catholic Church. What is the greatest chapter in the Bible discussing the Roman Catholic Church and the, and the destruction of it? Revelation 10, 5, 1, 2, 17. Revelation chapter 17. Now, if this was accurate, it would show Rome. You know, St. Peter's Basilica and the, and the big Egyptian obelisk out in the middle of the Eightfold Path of Enlightenment, you know, and, and the world's biggest sex symbol. Uh, it would show, you know, the Vatican and all the evil there and everything else, if it was accurate. But what's it show? Oh, it's a woman. Just a woman. That's all it is. She's a harlot. That's what she does. You know, and of course, a lot of inappropriate pictures in there and everything. You know, and she's destroyed. And there you have, there she is, you know, and, and uh, all the people there and everything else. See, so somebody, again, they'll look at this and they won't make the tie-in to Roman Catholicism which the Bible plainly teaches as Mystery Babylon. All right, she's symbolized as a woman. That's why they call her Holy Mother Church, you know. But it's a city, okay, not a woman. It's a city. And they even talk about there. So is that ostent, you know. Let me, let me show you this, too. This, this is a crack up. You know, we got we to gotta redo the King James because it's too hard to read. Indeed, the woman that you saw is that ostentatious city that dominates the kings of the earth. Oh yeah, okay. That's a lot easier to understand than the old archaic King James Bible. What a, what a joke. I mean, give me a break. But now we'll go to 159, page 159 here. And again, you know, he sees the, the men that were beheaded. 
and these guys are sitting on thrones and they take their heads and they stick them back on and now they're okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, don't lose your head, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, give me a break. I don't even know what to say about a lot of this stuff. It's just so weird, just so messed up. But how about, for good measure, how about another Triketra? Sure. You know, on the back of the throne, you get these weird bald-headed angels, you know, with wings. And the whole thing is just occultism. But what would be the perfect way to end this satanic book that's going to prepare people to take the actual mark of the beast and, and prepare them for all this evil? What would be the best way to end it? How about with a QR code? That seems about appropriate, doesn't it? So there you have it. I know you're just going to rush right out and get one of these things. <laughs> Don't even think about it. Um, you want to know about Bible prophecy? Right here. God did not inspire pictures. God inspired words. And you better stick to the words of God, the pure words of the Lord. All right? Let me tell you something. As bad as the illustrations are in here and is horrible and evil and everything else, I think in reality it's going to be a lot worse. You can't depict the things that are coming to this earth in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's going to be so bad that this world's never seen anything like what's going to happen, like what's going to come. And the Lord, the Lord's not going to give you images of that. Okay? I mean, it's this kind of stuff is, is nonsense. Don't fall for this illustrated thing and all that stuff. Whatever. Very dangerous to get away from the written Word of God. Let the Lord make, you know, images in your mind of what people look like and whatever else. You start putting that stuff into your head, you'll start to, you know, be persuaded. Okay? Um, images are very dangerous. Uh, it's a, it's a well-known fact that television has far more power over people because of images than does reading material. All right, that's why I avoid pictures when it comes to Bible characters or whatever. All right, it's very dangerous. And you know, I've taught for a long time that this guy that they show, you know, pictures and stuff and paintings that is supposed to be Jesus Christ, I believe he's going to be the Antichrist when he shows up. All right. Very dangerous. I mean, at least he's not going to look like a, a weird half sheep, half man. You know, <laughs> crazy. So, stay away from illustrated books like that. Um, this thing here, like I said, it's just another new version. They're going to keep on coming out with new ones and, and more new ones and new ones and new ones and new ones. It's about money, mostly. But it's also, there's a more satanic agenda here, and that is to deceive, to show people lies, okay, and, and to, to make them think the mark of the beast is going to be carved in the forehead so when the real mark of the beast shows up and it's just a tattoo or something, all that, it's not that bad, you know, and all this other stuff. Very, very dangerous, okay. Stick by the King James Bible. Do not be deceived by the new versions. That's it. Thank you.